Hello, this is Shan Chandrasekhar welcoming you to another delightful part of our program. As part of the Achievers, we featured some of the finest, highly accomplished people from around the world. Welcome to a special on Sir Garfield Sobers, whose legendary exploits on the cricket field earned him the reputation as the greatest cricketer ever. He played 93 tests in his legendary career, scoring 8,032 runs from 160 innings at an average of 57. His 26 test centuries included an innings of 365 not out against Pakistan, which still stands as the highest individual score ever made in the test match. Over now to Chandrasekhar and Sir Gary. Sir Gary, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Anne. It is really a great pleasure to be here. You know, you don't need any introduction at all. You're one of the most lovable players in the world, and, and around the world, cricket fans, you know, adore you. Now, tell me something. Uh, at, at the present time, from what I understand, you're very busy uh, being a consultant with the Barbados uh, Tourism Board, I believe. Yes. Um, I have been working with the Barbados Board of Tourism now for probably some 10 years, 10 to 11 years. Um, just before I went back from, Aus from Australia back to the West Indies, I started working with the board over a period of four months. And I did that for about three years before I went back to Barbados. And I've been back in Barbados now, what, some eight years. And I continue on from there. So I've been with the board now about 11 years. And I'm certainly enjoying being with the board because my good friend, the Honorable Wes Hall, is the Minister of Sports and Tourism. And... Um, at one stage, I was his boss, and now he's my boss. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't look at it, as he say, as boss and, and um, an employee. And, and knowing the game of cricket, you know, there is no such thing as boss or employee because, uh, you know, the, the, you, you change, you shift your hats so quickly with each other, especially when you captain a team. Am I correct? Because there's great team spirit. Yes. Well, that is something that we have always tried to uh, instill into our players, that, um, team spirit. And I think this is something that has helped the West Indies team over the last 14 or 15 years to maintain the, 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 the um, position in world cricket as number one team in the world because of the team spirit and the way that they've played together. Wesley Hall, for instance, you know, he was one of the fastest bowlers in the world. You know, he had the record at, at times, you know, over 100 miles an hour uh, as a paceman. Now tell me, as in his capacity as a cabinet minister right, right now, is he still fast on his feet? Yes, well, I, I think that it wasn't only his um, his ability to bowl, but I think he was a, such a great character of, of the game and such a lovable person. And I think he's carried it on with him into his ministry as um, Minister of Tourism and Sport. And he's been doing a tremendous job in Barbados as a minister. And um, I'm sure that a lot of people should be very proud of him because he's done extremely well. And he's a very hard working man. You're one of the greatest uh, all-rounders in the world. You know, it's very seldom you come across a person who is a, a, a great batsman, a great bowler, and a great fielder. How did you get involved in cricket? Well, I, I suppose like all um, sportsmen all over the world, whatever is the national sport in that country, as youngsters, you all start to play. In the early stages, starting off as a youngster, because I, I started playing cricket like, all, like well, most West Indians or most Barbadians, we start from up the age of four and five, when we can hardly walk. We, we played <laughs> all types of cricket in the West in Barbados, which is not really known throughout the West Indies, because we used to play a game called marble cricket, and um, that was kneeling on one knee with one, with, with one foot up and playing with a, a miniature bat. The bat cut down to about, what, two feet with a handle. And um, the length of the wicket was probably half the size of a full-size wicket. Mm -hmm. And we started that way because in those early days, we didn't have enough room to play. Mm -hmm. We used to play anywhere mm -hmm. alongside the house where you had two houses very close together. Mm -hmm. And the strip of land was probably, what, about 50 yards by 20, even if that long. Mm -hmm. So you had to invent some kind of game. Mm -hmm. So we invented the marble cricket so that we can get some kind of practice playing the game. And I think I started that way. And um, I think a lot of people uh, that knew me, even in my early days going on from there at school, um, around the age of 9, 10, and into 11, when I was playing for the school, saw that I had some kind of ability. And uh, they tried to help, and helped me tremendously. But I think that it's all put down to a lot of hard work, encouragement by my mother, my family, and uh, the dedication and hard work which I put into cricket as a youngster. 
and I think that um, I'd love the game so much, like all the other games, soccer, basketball, all the table tennis, all the sports we played, but cricket at that stage was the, was the one game that we were united in, and it was the only game that had an international flavor to it, and an opportunity for a youngster, particularly if you come from a humble background, to, to have the exposure of being able to travel overseas and to play in, in various countries like England, Australia, um, India, Pakistan, and other um, cricketing nations, which one would not have had in, in any other sport. And if you weren't good enough, you might not have had the opportunity to travel because from the humble background that one came from. So you kind of use that as your incentive with the ability that you had, and you made it work for you, and you worked hard at it. Gary Sobers, three bowlers in one, capable of five different deliveries. The end swinger, which comes in to have England's Ray Illingworth leg before wicket at the Oval in 1973. Ow, that must be out. A late swinger from Gary Sobers. And bowls England's Phil Sharp. Oh, and he's bowling. The outswinger, which finds the edge of Frank Hayes' bat for a catch to slip. It's out. Good catch. Fine catch, Clive Lloyd. And Sobers. Then bowling spin to Ellingworth. Followed by the googly. Beautiful googly and got. Yes, it was called it slip. And the orthodox leg break to England's Keith Fletcher for the rest of the world in 1970. Caught him. A good delivery by Sobers. The ball spinning from leg stump, finding the outside edge of Fletcher's bat. Sir Gary Sobers showing a few of the many facets that made him such a phenomenal all-round cricketer. Tell me a little bit about the training. You know, you have now trained some of the topmost cricketers in the world. Uh, tell me about holding the ball. You're a left-arm you know, uh, spinner. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you, you do both in-swinging, you bowl out-swingers, and googly and Chinaman. Now, this is the grip for the Chinaman, as you can see. The index finger across the seam, the second finger just resting on the seam, but the third finger is bent right across the seam, as you can see. The wrist is cocked into that position because you must remember that apart from the fingers, you have to also use your wrist because it's finger and wrist spin that you are going to achieve, which helps you to enable the ball to turn a lot more. A lot of people over the years have mistaken the left hand is Chinaman for the googly, but the left hand is Chinaman is the off break and not the googly. The googly is the reverse similar to the right hand is googly. The only difference that the right hand is googly comes from the off side and the left hand is googly comes from leg to off. In the field of art and culture and ballet, they talk about a dancer's movement. You know, the game of cricket, uh, you know, there's footwork that's involved, the way you have demonstrated footwork. Here is the way Sir Gary's feet are placed for his orthodox left arm spinner, delivered from round the wicket. Front foot pointing to slip, acting as a pivot on follow through. For the Chinaman, from over the wicket, the front foot also pointing to slip. But for the googly, note the change, front foot now pointing straight, allowing a chest on delivery. Delivering left arm fast from over the wicket, Sir Gary produces the in-swinger. The ball swinging in from off to leg. And the out-swinger, the ball moving in the opposite direction from leg to off. You hold the world record until today as being the topmost batsman, I mean topmost scorer in the world in a single innings. Uh, you scored 365 single-handedly against on, in a test team against Pakistan. Do you remember that game? Well, um, let's say it wasn't single-handedly really because I had Conrad Hunt at the other end. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, and it was very unfortunate that, you know, that Conrad got run out because I'm sure if Conrad didn't get run out that he probably would have got the record before me and I might not have, and I might not be in position to do that because we would have had so many, so many runs on the board 
that the, cap the captain would have declared by the time the seed got his record, and I would not have been able to had, had the opportunity to do so. But Cornwood got, it, got ran out, and um, I was able to go on to score the 365, which obviously had given school children a day for every, a run for every day of the year. You so it's something happening. that they can always remember. Um, but it was, you know, it was one of those things because when I started my career back in 1954, a lot of people have seemed, seemed to have forgotten that I started as a bowler. And I had played some, what, um, 20 innings or even more than that. I don't recall because I never do keep statistics of my innings or my test matches or my runs. Anything that I refer to is something that I hear. Other people have brought up to me and have explained. Like if I go to a function, somebody will give a statistics of me and they keep reminding me of what I've done. And up to then, I hadn't scored 100. And people have always said, you know, how come that he's such a, a good batsman? And everybody's talking about him as a batsman. He's never made 100. And he's played over, um, what, 10, 15 test matches. Forgotten that I started a bowler. So when I got that 365, against Pakistan in 1959. It was my first Test 100, and it went on to be a record score. Isn't that something? That's <laughs> amazing. Congratulations again. <laughs> Thank Tell you. Tell me, when did Garfield Sobers become Sir Gary Sobers, the Sir title? When did you acquire that? Oh, I think that was back in, um, in 1977, I think. Um, I, again, you see, as, as I said to you, I don't ever keep these things in my mind to remember them or when they did happen. But, um, but how did you feel when that happened? Oh, I think it was a great honor. I think that um, the excitement and the feeling that one gets from such a, an honor, which is probably the greatest honor that you can get in, your, in sport in your lifetime, is something that you can, you can never express. You can never tell people how you feel. It's something that is in, in, within you. Um, you can only say how happy and how in, you, you, you are so over, overjoyed and overwhelmed by the success of the honor of the knighthood, which has been placed upon you. But th th it's, it's a lot more than that. The feeling is a lot deeper than that. It's something that one never can never explain. You know, but all I know is that I was very, very happy and very honored to be knighted by the Queen. That's wonderful. I'm sure that there were uh, millions of people around the world who were very thrilled when you, uh, when you were knighted by the Queen. Yes, well, I, as people have always said, it was, it was very appropriate because um, um, fortunately or unfortunately, the Queen was in Barbados at the time, opening one of our big um, national insurance building and she thought then at the time seeing that she was there that it would be um, quite fitting to um, place the knighthood on me and it was done on the garrison pasta this is where the, this is the race course where the horses run and people know that I've been so fond of, of, of horses and I have you know had the odd bet on, on horses that they thought it was a very appropriate place <laughs> to be knighted and and it, you know and there were oh Nearly half of Barbados was on the on the pastor there to to uh, to witness um, the ceremony, and which was a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be to for, for it to be done in, in in my hometown. I think that um, a lot of people really had appreciated. It. They had the opportunity of watching me be united in Barbados. This is wonderful. Uh, where do we go from here? What what can we expect from Sir Gary in the coming years with respect to? Um, Cricket, for instance, you know, are you going to be playing any advisory role uh, in the in the field of cricket to other countries? Uh, you know, consultation. Well, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm always willing to give my services and to help in any way I can, or wherever, whenever I can, and wherever I can, because I got a tremendous amount out of the game, and I would like to put something. And I've always feel that I should put something back into the game. I do um, do quite a quite a lot at home in Barbados, in in, in my own community with either um, one or two of the West Indian players, or I go to the local clubs in the evening and talk to them, have sessions with them. And sometimes I'm invited into places like India or Australia or anywhere else, or if I'm in England or anywhere, and one needs any help, um, they're always welcome to come to me. I'm always willing to help and to give um, advice wherever I can. Sir so Gary, it's been an honor to have you in the show with us. And we would love to see you back in Toronto very, very soon. And anything we can do for you or for the game of cricket, it's for the asking. And it's a pleasure and an honor to have you in the studio with us, sir. Dan, thank you very, very much. It's been a great pleasure to be here. And I do wish you, you and your studio all the best in the future. And I hope that you continue to produce the kind of program that you're producing. Thank you very much.